You know, we're excited to see what kind of data that we collect from this first project. Any sort of data we get is going to be brand new information for us. And for... Liftoff of the Falcon 9 rocket and the Dragon spacecraft, packed with science and supplies for the International Space Station, humanity's home in low Earth orbit. So we were originally scheduled to be on SpaceX 14, but about a week before launch, um, our project got uh, canceled from that launch because of some issues with the con controlled environment. Science in space can be complex, and no matter how meticulously things are planned and executed, sometimes those complexities get in the way of launching on time. When equipment used to house the experiment didn't look perfect for a final pre-flight test, there was no choice but to push it to a later flight to ensure mission success. As a first-time investigator, that was, um, what, it wasn't devastating, it was just sad that we weren't gonna be able to launch because we, it, up to that point, it had taken us about two years to get there. Ultimately, it gave us about six months more time to reevaluate that controlled system and do some more groundwork to prepare for the launch in December of 2018 on SpaceX 16. After the setback of being moved to a later launch, our team of scientists now has only days left before their experiment will be loaded into a SpaceX Dragon capsule that will carry it to the International Space Station. Elaine and Peristu, the co-founders of a biomedical startup, are at NASA's Kennedy Space Center, readying their research for microgravity. Since this is our first project that's launching to station, this is our also our first time working at the Kennedy Space Center. So it's been an exciting moment to, you know, not just see the visitor center and go look at the touristy things, but also get to get past the security gate and into the actual laboratories. While some experiments are loaded into Dragon in the weeks leading up to launch, others have more time-sensitive components. These require precise preparation and loading in the days before liftoff. For those scientists, laboratories at the Kennedy Space Center that are a part of the Space Station Processing Facility, or SSPF, become a home away from home. Here, they can carry out the critical last steps of preparing their experiments for delivery to the space station. So we got here on a Thursday and it's currently Sunday. Been a big day yesterday filling up these wells with gel solution and getting ready for handover at 7.30 a.m. on Monday, ahead of launch on Tuesday afternoon. Once you arrive here, you kind of get into this other time. It's, it's this weird like little time bubble where everything is now L-based and L being launch and it's L minus 72, L minus 48, L minus 24, and, it, and it's just building up to the actual launch time. With those precious remaining hours, the team is prepping their microplates for microgravity. Microplates are also used in labs on Earth, but these were specially designed to be self-contained. My role on the project was to design the actual microplate themselves. The challenge on orbit, though, is that uh, generally fluid experiments have to be conducted in the glove box, and the glove box is, is very time limited. Uh, it's very crew intensive. So we've designed this self-contained microplate that uh, can be operated outside of the glove box. It has all of the containment to keep the fluids inside. So we have loaded these uh, wells with uh, hydrogels that they were carrying drugs. And we, wanted, we want to actually look at the effect of microgravity and how the release of the drug is affected when we send it to the space station. So the concern that we have is that if we have bubbles that are in the wells, it may be difficult for the plate reader to be able to read the amount correctly. So we are being very careful with uh, how we are loading the waters. Uh, so what's left to do today, once Parasu here finishes filling the, the microplates, I'm going to take over and seal them up completely. Once that's done, we'll add all the labels onto the microplates and put them in a, a self-contained box that uh, is what they'll actually travel to the space station on. <laughs> Three years in the making just to get here. <laughs> Once we do that, we'll turn it over to Cold Stow. Cold Stow will take it from there, and uh, the next time we'll see them will be on, their, on orbit and the crew's opening them up. 
Cold Stow, short for cold stowage, is the team responsible for making sure that the research stays at the right temperature on its journey from the lab on Earth to the lab in space. This handoff is one of the last steps before being loaded onto the rocket. The cold stowage team will take Elaine and Peristu's experiment and keep it safe and sound before it's loaded for launch. Does it feel like a relief? Well, it'll feel like a relief when we actually see it take off. And then it'll be finally... A huge step though. Yeah. It's done. It's out of our hands at this point. <laughs> yeah. It'll be officially out of our hands when it leaves the Earth's surface. So that'll be, that'll be the moment that we were finally, finally done. Until we get data and then we get to process it. <laughs> That's just the beginning actually. <laughs> So what will happen now is now that we've handed them over to NASA, NASA will deliver, they're on their way right now out to, to Dragon to be loaded. And the launch hopefully will happen tomorrow at uh, 1338. I've been involved since the very beginning, which is approximately about three years ago. Uh, it's been a long road, <laughs> but uh, like everything, it's, it's a lot of work, it's worth it. And uh, we're excited to, to, to help Tim and get some data for this project. Overall, we're going to get a lot of data from just this one project and those two experiments that are going to form a lot of different things for us. <laughs> All right. It's a little windy out here today. It's a beautiful day. Uh, it's a little windy has got me concerned. My, my launch intuition is uh, tingling a bit. It's always an awesome and amazing and special thing to see.